Kaifu on the global. They've gone for a slightly shorter range jump, and it's going to be the leap on that Kha'Zix. So the champions they've got now, we're going to see their Jax again. The Orion is a little bit more traditional for moves, and I think Impaler being on a, an aggressive sort of uh, ganking style jungler like this Kha'Zix, I feel like is a, is a good return to the flavor that this team likes to play. The thing is, can they implement it? That's the real test. We'll find out. We're in game Millennium versus the Super Hot Crew. Game three of our final day of Super Week here in Europe. And what a fantastic Super Week it's been. Even today, that opening game in particular being a real highlight. And we've still got three more to go, including this one. Well, definitely don't go anywhere. And the challenger, of course, is uh, even after that. So it's still yes. a full night of action and a full weekend with North America. Super Steve week as well. bakes cookies. We'll have to see if his, his gameplay is as good as his cookies are. But for this game right now, Millennium Super Hot Crew, it is going to be a slow start at the very beginning. Millennium, basically the only team that actually likes to make plays happen very early on, uh, sometimes to their detriment. But as it stands, uh, passive start slowing down. They've, they've got nothing to work with. I mean, if they were to go for level one, they've got some poke. That, that's it. There's no hook. There's no hard CC to hold people in place. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally right on that <laughs> one. I don't really have much Minions more to say on that topic, so I'm going to switch topics. The ward's coming down early there. We see Mixer just spotting that one out and basically pinging in identical areas across the map, and we can see that pretty much in each position there's a red and a blue ward right next to each other. At this point in time, we're going to have those standard lanes, and we're going to have another sort of unique duo lane, this time for Millennium. They're going to go for that Caitlyn and Zillion. And as long as Zillion has got some mana to play with, that he can use those bombs sitting on the heads of Mr. Riles and Mixer, I feel like the poke is going to be in favor of Millennium. But the problem is, there's not a whole lot of kill potential on their side. You know, Mixer on Thresh, he's going to be able to hold somebody in place. And that's going to allow Mr. Riles to help them secure a kill. The one thing that's also going to work in Super Hot Crew's favor is those bombs are going to push the wave towards their tower. So Super Hot Crew have the option to go for kills or to play defensively, depending on how they, they use their abilities in this lane. Well, there we see, look, level two on Kirk to the level one on Moops. 8% extra experience for Millennium in this game. Let's see if that affects the running of things as RNA here is out of mana having to go at the blue buff. Uh, he's going to try and uh, just juggle this one around. Obviously, does have his smite. He looks going to regen him. We'll see if he gets involved in any of the lanes. Impaler only just getting over to his blue. Oh, Jerry's in trouble. He is in a lot of trouble. Can they catch him? One more auto attack, and there is that speed boost that I was mentioning earlier from Zillion. He's got no boots, and you still can't keep anywhere near him. Yeah, Jerry's flash is down, though. So if Mixer gets caught by a death sentence, he is going to go down. He needs to play. Uh, uh, Jerry needs to play a little bit safer moving into those next moments of the game and if we go back to that pre-game video where the Super Hot crew were talking about Millennium as a team Super Hot crew were saying that Millennium tried to force new champions you know instead of sticking with sort of what what is known to be strong elsewhere Olaf top this is the first time that we're seeing it to the split I'm gonna go on a limb and say that you see you know the, the zillion support it's not very popular it's second time if memory serves so we got to see how Millennium make this one work for them. Yeah, I think the only time that we saw Olaf previously was Colberto substituting for Gambit in the jungle. I don't and I think week one, Diamond also played him in the jungle once as well, if, if memory serves. But yeah, it's it's a champion that we haven't seen super regularly or, or, or super popularly at all. Let's see how Kevin runs it this time around. Obviously, he used to be an old favorite in the top lane, did Olaf. Reminiscing somewhat there, <laughs> Olaf in the top lane against Malphites and what have you. Possibly not the most entertaining top lanes. This one could be changed here though because Impaler's waiting around. Question is, can you lock down Kevin? So it's going to be very difficult. Kevin's got his ghost on as well. So the moment that stun wears off, there's no other CC really from Mima or Impaler to hold him in place. And as far as the matchup goes, Kevin on Olaf is going to be able to shake off that uh, Counter-Strike stun once he gets his Ragnarok. And he's one of the few top laners that can actually trade and duel a Jax. The lower Kevin's going to go, the higher his attack speed's going to get from his W. He's got some lifesteal. He's also got true damage as well. So once Jax gets all those additional defensive statistics from his ultimate, it doesn't matter because that Reckless Swing is just going to slam down and hit Mima pretty hard. So this could be a really interesting duel. Unlike the previous one, which is a little bit more uh, stale between the Jax Aatrox. You can see there, Aaron Air with that extra experience that he's getting. It should hit level 6 before that of Impaler, who's obviously come down towards this bottom lane. Lantern, of course, is available. 
for Mixer as Mimer and Kevin again go head to head. That perma stun almost of the Axes coming out there from Kevin. As we are going to see a Lantern down, they're going to go in for it, but the Hawks miss. They go in for Critz, and nonetheless, the damage just returned straight away. Bomb on Impaler. Yeah, 90 caliber net to get away. Unfortunately for Mixer, not landing the death sentence. Means no follow-up can land. I like the attempt though. At the very least, Impaler's trying to look for kills on a champion like Kha'Zix where he's going to be outscaled by an Evelyn. I feel the, the threat that RNA offers as well as the team fight power of that Agony's Embrace, if Super Hot Crew stay a little bit grouped, is going to be very, very powerful. Impaler's not necessarily the one you want to be starting the team fight for Super Hot Crew. He wants to jump in after somebody's a little bit low get some executes and then eventually hop around, but it will take him some time to get there. Now, there is Kerb actually level six to the level five of Moops, and he kind of felt that some pressure was going to come out of the jungle. Impaler was already starting to come around the side, couldn't quite get in. He's far behind Aranea in terms of experience right now. We see that Aranea is level five and a half, going to be hitting six, definitely for Impaler. The question is, where will Aranea really make his presence felt on the map? Where's the focus going to be, really, for Millennium against the Super Hot Crew as he comes into middle? Moops is going to try and get away, but they're going to chain things together. Shield comes out from Moops. That was so close. Very well played there by Millennium. Actually, just timing that one, you could actually see Aranea hesitated. He waited to line up the ultimate Creatin. Great 90 caliber net. Going to get away from that hook in the bottom lane. You asked about the where does Aranea go? And truthfully, any lane that's overextended. There's a lot of damage for all of his lanes, and right now, they're going to set their sights on Mimer, but there's still no agonies just yet. Ragnarok popped, and Mimer's like, ha, that's a completely obvious sign that Evelyn is going up to that top lane. Was indeed true. Uh, Aranea was on his way to have a bit of a go on towards Mimer. Doesn't get it, though. So there was too many minions for Kevin to really pick that fight as well. They would have melted him down in conjunction with Mime if the fight carried on. The one thing that I think Millennium are a little bit weak at right now is setting up a team fight or setting up a pick unless they catch Super Crew out of position. Arane is sneaking himself. He does have Smite. Smite War, who's going to get it? Wow, that was awkward. A uh, <laughs> little, little bit too early. And uh, Impaler's like, wow, that was pretty <laughs> close. Almost lost my red buff, but he gets it nonetheless. Bit of a scare for him. Mimer had just come down there as well, but RNA has already sped himself up with that W, and he's way out of harm's way. And to just go back to that point about Millennium looking for a, a, a pick, because they don't have that stun from Jax, or they don't have a death sentence from Mixer, they're going to be quite reliant on Aranea coming in from the side or coming in from behind somebody of Super Hot Crew, getting the kill and then moving forward uh, onto a tower and objective. The one thing that is quite nice for Millennium is that their team fight before or, or while their team fight while they spread out will at least mitigate a lot of Super Hot Crew's strengths. But you see a gank in this top lane, Impaler's coming in. He has evolved his Q at level 6. They're going on Kevin. Yeah, they're going to get the stun. There is no Ragnarok there for him. We're going to see the ghost used. Well, first blood comes down, and it's Jax that picks it up. So, you know, he's fallen behind a little bit in CS here as Myra, but he gets that first blood can't allow a Jax to get rolling. Definitely not. As it stands though, Mime has been struggling a little bit in that top lane. He was falling behind on CS. It's 20 right now. The fact that he's got the first blood is going to at least make up that goal difference. And Aranea is going to clear this wave out. So what's quite important about that wave being picked up by Aranea is going to give him some additional gold and the experience. And very importantly, is not going to let the damage land on that tower. So Kevin can try to pull himself back into it. Impale is looking once again for another gank doesn't have his ultimate available, so he's not going to be uh, jumping in there stealth like we've seen previously. Yeah, he walked over the top of a ward as well. Kurt was just trying to keep him there as long as he possibly can. Impaler, as you said, level six now. Let's uh, pop in through on that one, this bottom lane. And it's funny because Creighton's so vocal about the fact that if you fall behind as an AV carry, it's so hard to have an impact on the game, and it means that you have to almost force a kill in that bottom lane. You have to then kill to get back into it. How are you going to set up a kill with a zillion? So there's one of these things that, you know, we see in the previous game where Jax had the shields of the wild growth from Lulu and he had the intervention from Kale. In this game, it's going to be Olaf going up against a Jax. There's no save Jax's life button really for the super hot crew. However, for Millennium, if Kevin gets into a position where he's dueling Mayim or he's running amok in the back line, that, uh, you know, that rewind from Zillion is going to give 
Olaf the extra lease on life. It's going to give him the time that he needs to either kill Mr. Rawls or destroy Impaler. And once those damage threats are down, you can focus Jax as a team, which I think is a very smart call. Let's see how it works from the Later this game goes on. Kevin at the moment back into his lane. Got himself a chain vest, double Doran's blades and a Doran shield with boots of speed as well. So he's going to be feeling pretty confident. Got good damage while having those tanky stats for this stage of the game as well. Mima's really not wanting to even challenge. You've seen that that minion wave was pushing up. Mima's hanging way back at his tower. He doesn't want to get caught by those undertows. He doesn't want to take more poke than he needs to. Mixer, even though he's like quite overextended without Mr. Rawls, there's no real kill threat on him. He has to take an immense amount of poke before an ace in the hole and, you know, those double time bombs can even run a threat of killing him. Super crew with a little bit of invade just to get rid of the vision. Really going to jump away. Actually, he did get knocked against Ooh. the wall there with that satchel charge. Aranea, is he going to speed off? Actually, ace in the hole. They're going to try and combo things, and that is a good amount of damage. A bouncing bomb. Ooh, that was really close. I'm not sure it wouldn't quite finish him off, but it would have been super close. Either way, Millennium have the start on the Dragon. Impaler is low, which makes it so much harder for him to come in. There's the Colin being thrown down. Who's going to get this one? It is going to be stolen. Impaler picks up the Dragon. He's got a bomb in his head. A shockwave comes down onto Jay Ree. He's put the ultimate on himself, and now Mooks is trying to get away. That doesn't work out. Mr. Rawl's going to be chased down. Barrier, flash from Kerr. The bomb! And the bouncing bomb bounces far enough. And that is two kills for the uh, for Millennium. If Millennium want to stick to the tower, they can get this one down. They've got a couple of members hanging around. You have to give props to Impaler there. He was able to smite the dragon because Aranea's smite was not available. He didn't have it when they started that dragon off. So Super Hot Crew come out with a small win as far as the gold is concerned, but the double kill onto Curb Ziggs is very, very worrying. You've seen how much damage those bouncing bombs were already doing to the members of Super Hot Crew, and they just can't let him get rolling further. He could even get this tower down because Moops is going to take a while to get you. Yeah, Moops is pretty much miles away from this one. There's a big wave of minions coming in. You can see Curb just spamming out those bouncing bombs. Actually, that one did hit Moops, which caused him to take turret aggro. Doesn't matter, though. Curb pretty much solos that outer turret. So overall, net gain is going to be in favor of Millennium now. They've got that mid tower down, which is going to allow RNA a little bit more freedom in that mid, uh, the middle lane in the middle of the map with that Evelyn, so he can start roaming around. We're seeing a similar ward strategy here from the Super Hot Crew against this Eve. Uh, defensive pinks, pink wards in their jungle, trying to get just information on when RNA is invading, as opposed to deep pink wards or deep vision, which would give you information on when RNA is doing his jungle camps, for example, and allow you to rotate around the map that way. And it's Kirk continuing with the damage. Both mid laners got that Athene's advantage in CS. He's over on one side. This top lane remains interesting for me. Kevin versus Mimer. Kevin does have the CS lead there. Got that chain vest in, which will negate a lot of what uh, Mimer can throw at him at this stage of things. So he's got himself the cutler, so he's got a bit of sustain in that top lane. But up until now, they don't expect him to be killing each other without anyone uh, really interfering in that, whether that's a Kerb roam into ulti, possibly all the junglers getting involved. Because of the fact that Kevin has actually maxed his reckless swings and he's got two points in that undertow, I actually feel like over a prolonged fight, Kevin may have the kill advantage there. You can chase Jax down with those undertows. He's got one leap. Kevin can throw the ghost down, get undertow after undertow, and stick to Mima. And I think that's probably why Mima's playing super defensive. He's 30 CS down in that lane. If you look across the other lanes, Millennium have got a 23 CS lead in the mid lane. They've got an additional assist on their jungler. And Caitlyn, has got a small edge in that bottom lane, but, you, but again, Mr. Rawls doing what he does best. He's, he's holding even, he's doing the best he can in that lane. And it's funny because I said earlier on about where's the kill potential really going to come from and it's just been the pure harassment that you get from the zillion of those bomb after bomb after bomb that's really start things off. Meanwhile, we haven't seen RNA coming into this top lane. Mima's going to have the help of Impaler. They're going to jump on towards Kevin. It's a lot of damage, but Impaler goes low, has to flash, does get the kill. Bomb flies over. Can RNA get over? There's two very, very low targets for him, but he can't get through. The burst damage was insane. Oh. I didn't expect that to work, but Kevin was isolated. Bouncing bomb comes out. Mima's one. Kirk gets it. He's looking for Impaler. Not this time. Not this time, but <laughs> jumps off the satchel charge and has another go. Now Moops has come to this top lane. There's two men just sat there in that side brush. Can they get anything from that one? Gritton did die, by the way, down in the bottom lane. Just saw that. 
and we didn't actually catch that uh, kill. I think that's probably just landing a hook. You may get a replay of that one, but regardless, in the top lane, I think the play moves is now in a little bit of trouble. He gets away. Yeah, actually, that's a use his flash from that one. They pinned him against the wall as well. I don't think feeling confident enough to tank up the turret, but that's low. They can probably finish off with this wave. The one thing oh. I want to touch on for that top lane kill onto Kevin is that Araneo waited. He waited until both Impaler and Mimo were standing next to each other that he could get a... Uh, uh, a proper attack on his ultimate, hit both of those targets. It ended up working in his favor somewhat, but unfortunately, Kevin, even with all of that armor and those ninja tabai, got shredded. So this is the kill, and yes, that's just Kreator being straight up hooked. Gonna eat the culling. Oh, great lantern as well. Even through the chrono shift as well, so gonna revive. Is there another hook? We're about to find out. There's just another play. I think that's just straight up outplay. Mr. Rolls and Mixer killed him twice. J. Re having to uh, actually flash away from that one as well, so he was lucky to actually survive with his life. Good play from the Super Hot Crew. Down bottom, it leaves us tied up in kill. Mixer, is he going to go down? Yes, he is. Creighton gets that kill. Impaler has to dodge the Mega Inferno Bomb. They've lost this turret, though. Yeah, they definitely have. As it stands, Kerp has put on his carry pants because he is doing a phenomenal job with the six. He's got three of his team's four kills. His Mega Inferno Bombs Maybe they haven't got kills, but they've put so much pressure on Super Hot Crew. And every time Kerp has been needed, he's been roaming on a champion that's not necessarily a super strong roamer. Yes, he's got good range with his ultimate, but he's pushed that bottom lane. He helped on the dragon. He got a kill on the top lane. A lot of damage on that tower. And with dragon respawning in 30 seconds, he's just finished off his sorcerer shoes as well. So in conjunction with that needlessly large rod, he's got a lot of damage to work with. RNA headed up in towards the enemy jungle and that pesky pink water spot we saw it already in our last game seems to be haunting Aranea as well this time. He didn't actually check that rough, so that pink will stay alive. Let's have a look down some of the items that have come in then. Specifically down in the bottom lane after those exchanges. Bloodthirster Zeal is done for Creatin. Other side, Bloodthirster Pickaxe. So pure damage going to be on Mr. Rall's side. Yeah, Mr. Rall's maybe feeling a little bit of pressure. Wants to go for that last wisp, but we'll see if it works out. From Super Hot Crew start the dragon first, but they can't afford to stay on it because Kerb's bouncing bombs are going to zone them out. Moops eats one, drops a lot of his HP. Every time Super Hot Crew go in, Melina will just keep poking them down, just keep poking them down, waiting for Arania to go in when they're low. Off to the side, flanking with that Evelyn. There's the start again from the Super Hot Crew. Let's not forget last time around, Impaler just stole that dragon away. As we're going to see the combo. Mixer going very low. They do get the dragon here, the Super Hot Crew. And will they survive with all five men in can't in alive? Yes, for now at least. Bouncy Mixer bomb. still waiting. Bomb still bouncing in and Kerp too scared to actually go in there. Mixer does actually get away with his life intact. Just tucked himself in the corner and I think prayed for a while. That was a little bit weird. Yes, Aranea took a lot of damage very early on, but Chrono Shift was available there. They didn't use that from Zillion. Do you see the bouncing bombs coming out, not getting kills? Millennium kind of wanted to challenge. Aranea went low and I think he probably made the call to back away. So Millennium, they give up that dragon. Super Haku secured. That's the second dragon of the game for them. Previous one, Impaler, was actually able to sneak away from Millennium, and it's keeping them in touching distance. So 1,500 gold down, but they're not by no means out of it. They still haven't made a play of their own. Impaler's got a good gank in the top lane, but they haven't pushed for any other towers, the exception of the one they got following the kill in the bottom lane. Yeah, that's the thing. If they evened up the tower score now, they'd be actually ahead yeah. in this game. So we'll see if they can actually get into a scenario where they can push those towers down. And I think part of the reason why it's so hard is because of that Evelyn on the map. You never quite know when she's going to come in there to rescue and put you in a, a, in a position where you're down by a man or two. And you know what's going to be even more difficult for Super Hot Crew? Is actually sieging a tower. If there's a couple members of Millennium up, there's wave clear from Undertoes, there's wave clear from Ziggs, there's wave clear from Caitlyn, and those bombs are also going to be doing, you know, splash damage across all of the minions. So Millennium have got a lot of champions that are going to be able to clear out those minion waves quite efficiently and quite effectively. So Super Hot Crew need to find kills, and they need to either out-rotate Millennium, catching them off guard, or they just have to be in a very, very advantageous position where Millennium are too afraid to, to even be standing on their tower. Move up four kills. Certainly do with that one, Aranea just giving him a bit of a helping hand. Of course, Aranea did challenge for that red buff last time around, so we'll see if he ends up on that side of the map again. Kevin is going to do a standard top lane thing and keep pushing, pushing, pushing. So, uh, Sunfire Cape is now in his inventory, so 
That'll certainly help things out on that front. Got the Ninja Tabby as well, so stacking up that armor against the Jax just to be able to go up against it because whilst damage is going to help him, obviously, with that reckless string, the true damage coming out from him, he's always going to have that source. The thing is, it's quite difficult for Kevin because even with the armor that he had previously, he didn't have the HP to survive the rest of the damage from Impaler's Kha'Zix. And also, there's a good chunk of damage that is magic from Jax. He's empowering his W, and the third attack from his ultimate is going to be doing a lot of magic damage. So Kevin's going to want some MR soon. As it stands, Millennium gets a good poke at Impaler, and they're going to grab themselves a completely free turret. Not just the siege potential here, but the zoning that they've got just from Ziggs alone. I mean, Kerp has been really, really accurate today with those bouncing bombs. You've got that minefield, which just keeps you out of a complete area. Millennium, simply take that in the turret. They're going to back away, and that just edges their gold lead a little bit further out. So one of the things that Millennium can do very well for the rest of this game, because they've got good siege, both aggressive and defensive uh, tools to their, they can use to their advantage, if Millennium just decide to disengage every team fight, but push every tower, move up, land, poke, grab the tower, then run away. Use the Zillion speed up, get undertoes to get rid of people, put the minefield down so Superhawk could not chase them. Millennium have got a legitimate tactic of just playing towers. They don't have to fight because they've got the longest range AD carry with Caitlyn, who can get those auto attacks on the turrets with Ziggs and Olaf and uh, Zillion putting poke down. I'm here just waiting in the brush. Impaler is going to be coming towards that top lane. Aaron A going to be spotted. Mimer actually going to stun him up here. We'll see if he can actually finish him off. That is a lot of damage coming Aaron A's way. Can he escape it? No, he can't. Mimer gets that one. Impaler has to jump away, but Kevin is not messing around. He gets the undertow down onto Impaler. One for one, but Jack's got the kill for the super hot crew. The one thing that is good to see from that, though, now that Kevin's got that uh, Spectre's Cowl, he's got some MR to at least survive some of that magic damage that Mime is putting out. Arane announced he needs to get a little bit more tanky. He's got the makings of that Randian Zomen, but as we've seen, as soon as Mime focuses him, he lost about half of his hit points from one spell reel, from one combo there from uh, Mime's Jax. Arane really needs to avoid getting caught up by Jax. I think his focus is going to be trying to zone out Mr. Rawls, forcing him back if uh, some of these bigger team fights break out. So just touch on the AD carries again. We mentioned earlier that Creaton had fallen behind in that lane. Actually, quite far ahead at this point now. 206 to 180 CS there of Mr. Royal. So that constant poke and pressure from Jerry helped them get the lane back. And the fact is, Creaton has spent a lot of time on his own, just pushing wave after wave after wave and farming up. Yeah, the tower being down for Millennium also plays a little bit into Creaton's favor because the wave is pushing against him. You see, it's only really now reset itself and moving all the way up to Super Hot Crew's tower. So Creaton's had a lot of time basically safe farming. In order for Super Hot Crew to get to him, they have to extend very deep in that lane. There's 40 seconds until Dragon. Subar crew have grabbed both of the previous ones, albeit there's been quite awkward engages, I think, for both of the teams. Millennium have got pretty good vision. Actually, they've got phenomenal vision around the Dragon Pit. So very, very clear. I'm expecting Millennium to challenge for that next Dragon. There's pink wards cleared out by Super Hot Crew. They've got that one ward down in the death bush. There's one in the tri bush as well for Millennium as they put a few over and then another pink ward in to clear as much out as they possibly can. Pink ward itself probably going to go down as they just say battle over wards inside of that death bush for now. As a trap goes in, that'll stop them getting in. Put your own ward in there and see if they step on it. Yeah, that'll help just a little bit. Get that poke down. Now Millennium, I don't really think they're looking for a team fight here. I think with their composition having so much disengage and such fantastic long range poke, they want to get damage down on Super Hot Crew and then either finish up with an Evelyn or an Olaf, like getting a kill, or they just simply want to zone them out. Now, Arane has gone low. Chrono Shift is available. He gets a dragon. He gets it. Finally, Millennium are able to pick up a dragon. There's a good shockwave. Jerry going to follow. He actually had to flash away from that one. No one died just yet. Arane getting caught by the hook. Moops will finish him off. He's a dragon for a kill. Definitely worth it for Millennium. Kerp is going to try zoning out Super Hot Crew. The rest of Millennium are now barreling down this middle lane. Creatine is untouched right now. They're going to get on this inhibitor turret. Thresh will be the first one to defend, but he's not going to be enough to push them off. Guards in there for Mixer. But can they stop this turret going down? Will Millennium stick around? No, they won't. They're going to back away from that one. Uh, top in a turret is available for the taking, although they don't have the minion wave on their side yet. So the home guard boots of Impaler put a little bit of fear onto Millennium. If Millennium had stuck around and been jumped on by a potential like Impaler and Mimer, Jax-Kazix combo, 
there is the potential for them to have got, you know, killed and, and cleaned up. They didn't have their ultimates. Now all of a sudden, Millennium, they fall back to the jungle. Super Hot Crew are going to grab a tower. And this is something that I feel like we've not seen in quite a long time where a team simply runs up mid, then runs away and almost leaves a free tower. No defense on it whatsoever. Good move from the Super Hot Crew, though. Didn't quite get it finished off in the end, though, which is something that they... To be honest, need at this point. I mean, it's 2,700 gold, most of which is in the towers that Millennium have taken. I think all of it is in those towers, yeah. even on kills. CS is is in favor of Millennium. I mean, Olaf is definitely in a mind mate. You can see Creatures pulled ahead of Mr. Riles as well, but it hasn't necessarily equated to a massive item difference. Uh, Kevin is still working towards that Randuin's Omen. You can see Mima now with his Trinity Force and his Blade of the Rune King. He's, he's got a lot of damage. And if he's going to go for the same build that we've seen previously, Guardian Angel is going to be next. So with this red buff as well, I actually feel like he's got some dueling potential on Kevin in a 1v1. Especially if Impaler's going to hang out with him. You can see Impaler's wings have also been uh, enlarged. So he's got that evolved leap, which means resets are a potential if there's multiple people involved. Kevin actually was recalling, but now he's going to come in try and challenge Mimer. He's already seen Impaler's position though as Aranea is taking as much from the jungle as he possibly can. See that the Void Staff was picked up as well by Kirk now. So Rabadon's Athene's Void Staff and those Sorcerer's Shoes. It's a lot of damage from this six. There's next to no MR items for Super Hot Crew. There's a tiny bit with that Hex Drinker and you know Athene's gives you a little as well but truthfully no Spur Visages, no Banshee's Veils and I, I think Super Hot Crew need to prioritize some MR soon because if Kerp and Millennium are able to put them once again in those siege positions, the bouncing bombs were already hurting before the voice stop was picked up, so they're going to hurt significantly more. Mime trying his best to get on that turret, which Kevin has done so well to protect. Now Kerp is headed up towards the top lane. Impaler is already waiting. They know where Impaler is. There's the first bouncing bomb coming in. And actually, just dive in between the two of them. See how quickly that comes off cooldown here when... <laughs> and he's got that blue buff running in the Athenes. Yeah, it definitely helps out. We do see the rest of Super Hockey. They were thinking about going in, but they don't have more information to work with. The rest of Millennium now grouped up. We talked about how the strength of Millennium's composition is actually going to be in sieging towers. Uh, you know, either defending against it or pushing. The big over-aggression in Millennium, but I think Super Hot Crew may have bitten off more than they can chew. Yeah, Mixer actually at the back is going to be focused down. Kirk now on a rampage as he picks up that one. And that means that this turret is pretty much a freebie for them. Super Hot Crew, are they going to try and sit behind it and defend? I don't think they really can. Another minion wave actually coming Ooh. in. There's a poke again. And there is the ace in the hole blocked out by Mimer. And that is melting Mimer. He still has no defensive items picked up. Still sitting on his tier one boots. Millennium can continue the siege. Without Mixer there for the engage, you're just going to see Kerb throwing out those bouncing bombs over and over and over. They don't need to move from this position now, Millennium. They can continue to just poke and poke. Mimer off to the side, not full HP. Moops in a similar scenario. It's all about getting the minions here quick enough for them. And they see, as soon as Mixer comes back in, he's the one that can really start things off. But how? He's got to basically dive into the middle of the team. I think he's dead before he can really set anything up. There's a time limit for Super Hot Crew when defending against this much poke. The longer you stay there, the more difficult it is to defend because of the splash. The rest of Super Hot Crew are trying to, they were toying with the idea of pushing down the mid lane, maybe going to that turret and pulling Millennium towards them. But if you do that, Millennium is just going to say, great, go get our outer middle turret. We'll get you inhibitor turret. It's a trade Millennium will take, which is, I think, why Super Hot Crew backed away. At the end of the day, Millennium, play this one a little safe. It's still a minute to Dragon. Probably got some money to spend. Get ready and go for the next Dragon fight. Lanes are working with them as well. Top one pushed on straight through. Bottom one has just been pushed back a little bit by Mr. Oz, but going way past that halfway point. Super Hot Crew trying to buy themselves a bit of time here by shoving out as much as they possibly can. Now, we have seen a Last Whisper now finished in there for Britain. So, what armor there is, and even armor there's... Not much. Literally not. Like. It, it, it's glass cannons here for Super Hot Crew. So what that does mean is, is yes, you, you have the ability to win team fights and you have the ability to uh, kill Millennium, but you've actually got to do it. You've actually got to jump on Millennium, look for a fight. And as it stands, you know, the, the previous fight, Millennium played it perfectly. They had uh, uh, Kevin and Aranea quite extended in the lane. As Super Hot Crew were trying to go on those two, you know, tanky sort of frontline champions, the rest of Millennium just closed in from behind and, and suffocated any possibilities for Super Hot Crew to fight. 
Super Crew just still looking for that moment. 3,000 gold. It's not unthinkable to win a team fight, but they have to be very, very, very careful. Oh, from this one, we can see the Millennium have slightly backed away from it. What is the plan from them? Fight from a distance they've got. Great poke. We've seen it time and time again. There's another bouncy bomb coming in, and see what the amount of damage that it's able to do to the team. And just a couple landing and super hot crew's plans of even challenging for Dragon Go. Now, because RNA is sitting on the side, the moment one or two more bombs land, we've seen Kerb opening up team fights with that Mega Inferno bomb. Body blocked by, I think that was Mr. Rawls actually. Rest of Millennium now trying to surround them. Super Crew being split. This is good for Millennium. If they want to start a fight, RNA can go in. But Kurt Maiman wants to jump on the back line. They are going straight into this one. There is the bomb coming down the back. Moops is dead. I don't think Mix is going to survive. Ragnarok Olaf is charging in. RNA actually got one. He flashes over the wall to chase down Impaler. Couldn't quite get in on top of him, but nonetheless, that's 2 0. That's a dragon for Millennium. Super Hot Crew were so scared of that poke. They split up. They, they were in two different entrances to the river, and Millennium just ran them down. Millennium have got a lot of movement, they've got a lot of damage, and now they're extending that gold lead. It's now 6,000 gold right now. The Super Hot crew needed a team fight right then to not let this game fall out of, even further out of the control, and that's definitely not going to help them. Baron started off by Millennium. How is this one going to go for the Impalers waiting over the side? He's actually taking damage from the red buff here. Bomb almost enough to take him out, and he's zoned by the minefield. The Baron is super low. Are they going to be able to steal it? No, they're not. RNA will smite that one down. And now Millennium not only having that dragon, the last dragon, not only having the advantage in terms of turrets, now they've got a Baron buff to work with as well. Now, with the region that they've got from the Baron, I wholeheartedly expect Millennium to just siege for the next four minutes. Potentially just going to the bottom lane, getting the last inner turret uh, that's available, and then just moving on to the inhibitor turrets. They can spend the money that they've earned, use the composition to its full effect. They don't need to team fight because they've got all the tools they need to win the, the tower battle. And this is quite a smart uh, composition that they are pulling out for their last game of Super League. So, on the other side of the coin then, <laughs> Millennium is clear what they have to do to win this game. What can Super Hot Crew to stop Millennium doing that to them? Like, what is the plan for Super Hot Crew right now? So what Super Hot Crew needed to have done in probably that last Dragon Fight or, or the one prior to it is actually use a shockwave on multiple members of Millennium. We've not seen that shockwave come down in any in any real team fight. You know, it, it's been used a couple of times, but it's not it's not enough. And in order for that to happen, Super Hot Crew have to get Millennium at a choke point. So when Millennium are moving through the jungle or moving through the lane, you can see Millennium are grouping up in the bottom lane. Super Hot Crew need to have better vision that they can either jump on them from the side, pulling a death bush, or catch them off guard. Just jump over a wall instantly and try to get a three-man, four-man shockwave. And I just feel like Glass Cannon setup is not going to work when you've got an Olaf with a Sunfire Cape, a Banshees, and a Randoins, and the jungle's got a Randoins, and the mid lane has got a Zonya's Hourglass, and you've got Zillion in the team who's going to bring whoever does get low from that damage at the start, right back into life. You see there in wow. Paler taken half of his health away instantly by that ace in the hole. And to be honest, they can just push through. Look at the damage coming in. Mixer almost dies to that single combo out of Kerb. And they just tank it up. Kevin took the entire ultimate out of Mr. Riles. Inhibitor's going down. So Super Hot Crew lose their first inhibitor. The poke that comes down from Millennium worked out perfectly. We talked about how they just Force you low, they don't want a team fight. Millennium actually are not looking for kills. Got themselves an inhibitor. Uh, there's a minions actually securing an a tower there for Super Hot Crew, but it's it's not gonna change anything. Yeah, Millennium can regen, push the minions up in the middle lane, then counter shove the top lane and just get as many inhibitors down as possible, then siege the Nexus and close this game out. Feels like a matter of time for Millennium. They've had trouble closing out games in the past, but I think the setup really is on their side this time. We'll have to see. We saw Alliance earlier on, despite being, I don't want to say behind, because that was a strange game where they remained ahead uh, in gold and ended up losing a couple of team fights and then also the Baron as well. But we've seen comebacks happen, so the Super Hot Crew still have the ability to make something happen, and Millennium still have the ability to mess something up. So for Millennium, just on the Super Week, this is potentially their second win to have them go two and two. Bomb comes down. I mean, look at that damage now. Millennium, oh, he's dead. 
Yeah, Aranea jumping in for that one. And they're going for Aranea. And they didn't do anything to him. Aranea didn't really take any damage. The bomb will come in. Aranea steals it to get himself a double. This is inhibitor number two. They can win the game. There's so much damage on the side of Millennium. They've still got Chrono Shift. They've still got all of those bouncing bombs. It is just a matter of time before they get on those Nexus turrets. The Super Minions are about to get in there as well. So Millennium looks like they're going to go 2-2 two and two on Super Week. 2-2, two and two, and I think as the bottom place team in the league right now, they can be quite happy with it. This one performed really, really well. The games that they've lost this week, they've performed really, really well in, and that is a vital win. Confidence is going to be boosted for Millennium. They're going to need it in the fight against relegation.